Galactic Standard Date, Year, One One Three Five Six, Day Ninety One, Soul Standard Date, Fourth of the Third, Thirty Two Sixty Seven. Basilus had just set Tama down after letting Redemption run the age reversal program on him. Tama had let his jaw drop, along with all the other Xenos in the room, aside from the Atene. As Tama was testing out his younger reflexes and experimenting with his newly rediscovered agility, Basilus chimed in. So, any discomfort? Feel like a million bucks? Also, would you like a little bit of an upgrade? He said with a grin. Thomas smiled a massive fang smile. Oh. Oh yeah. There's no discomfort at all. It feels like I could kill a couple of Raspberry Death Squads barehanded. Oh. And that upgrade thing? If it may be as bad as it yourself, then sure. He said. Bassus laughed heartily and clapped his hands together with a resounding dong sound. I like you. You're just like how I used to be back in my soldiering days. Tell you what, I won't be able to turn you into a full conversion cyborg like myself, but I can definitely have Redemption set up some prototype cybernetics that'll work with a honey badger, he said. Tama nodded his head. Let's go with that. Turn me into a tin can full of whoop-ass, he said. Elania was watching Tama's whole transformation from wise old badass to young and hot badass with a level of anticipation she didn't know she could reach. As Tama got younger, the more one word stuck out in her mind. As Tama held a banter-filled conversation with a literal god, that word became more pronounced. Moist? Maybe it was time to make her move on the old war hero after all. She stepped towards Tama and shakily cleared her throat. Uh, um, Tama? I, I just wanted to, to ask. Would you, um, would you like to... Oh, fuck it. Would you like to go on a date with me? She blurted out. Tama just looked at her for a few moments, wondering what the hell this kid was on about, before the realisation hit him. Younger body means he has a functioning little head again, along with all the hormones and mind control that comes with. He looked around for a few seconds, considering it, before locking eyes with the younger Zenny, and popping a quick smile with one brow raised. Why, yes, that sounds like a great time, Alania, he said, as he threw a classic wink. Tama turned back towards Bastus and smiled. Well... Looks like we are going to have to postpone my, uh, upgrades. I want to enjoy this in the flesh, he said. Basilus laughed and leaned down to pat Tama on the back as lightly as he could. Go wild! I can have a room fabbed up for you that'll have a full romantic date night suite that you can sort through and pick from. The Netflix and chill is, of course, optional, but it looks like you're gunning for it anyways. Good luck, he said. Breaking out into a laugh again as he sent the two off with Aurelius to have him show them to their room. Bastus knelt down to Sliv and Saren, extending a hand towards each. You two, one next? We can make you all sorts of young again. Also, we have tons of customization options for snakes and foxes within the field of cybernetics already. We can turn you two into brand new men, he said with a smile. Sliv immediately accepted before slivering up Bastus' arm. Saren, on the other hand, was a little iffy on the whole thing. After all, what if their technology didn't work on the Kintanjo? This is precisely the moment Haruhi decided to show herself. What are you waiting for, kid? Uncle Bassi won't bite, unless you're an Azarian anyways, she said. Saren froze. He was looking at a Kintanjo that was quadruped instead of bipedal. The hands weren't hands either. This strange Kintanjo had paws. What the hell was she? There was that sense of familiarity that he didn't get with any of the other species too, so she was definitely Kintanjo. He just didn't understand now. Um, what? What are you? You are like me, but not, he said. Haruhi sat down and sighed. I guess that would be shocking to a kid like you, huh? I am called a red fox, native to Earth. You are not. I'm your distant evolutionary cousin from the leftover genetic stock that the old life seeders threw on Earth when they united with humanity. There's your history lesson. Now go have fun getting young again, kiddo, she said. Haruhi then jumped into the waiting hand that was meant for Saren, and climbed all the way up to Basilis' shoulder providing, Come on, hurry it up! Saren was going into shock again. She mentioned life seeders? She's talking about our gods of old. And what's more, she just dropped that they still live on in humanity. I wonder what these humans look like. 
I wonder if these Terrans will take me to a human. Wait, how is she talking to me? Her mouth wasn't moving. Saren climbed up into Basilis's hand while his mind was racing with the possibilities. Basilis yelled to Redemption to go ahead and reverse the agent these two. While that was going on, he looked to the sliv. You know, I never actually got your names. I am Basilis, Emperor of Man, he said. Sliv bobbed his head. My name is Sliv. The one in your other hand is called Saren. As for the two who just left, the lovesick girl is named Alania, and the man that she left with is named Tama. He is a member of the High Council as well as a war hero. I'm his last remaining squadmate, he said. Vassalus smiled. Nice to meet you, Sliv. You know, I like snakes. You guys are usually pretty chill. As such, I already have some templates for some nasty upgrades for your kind. I could get you hooked up with a full solid snake mecha. We can have one fapped up within a few minutes, he said, with a gleam in his cybernetic eye. Slave vibe Basilis for a long moment before bobbing his head yes. If you can help me keep up with whatever insane upgrades that maniac Tama will allow you to equip him with, then yes, I will partake of this solid snake. Basilis laughed and set the two down. You're all set. I'll have Aurelius whip up your upgrades after he's done setting up the lovebirds, he said. Basilis looked over to the new group of aliens and walked over to them. Hiya! Figure I should probably do introductions first this time. I am Basilus, Emperor of Man, he said, while motioning at the group. Vela leapt over the others while performing a flip and landing in a full koto. My name is Vela Tavani. Please allow this unworthy soul to worship and revere your lordship, as is your divine right, he said. Basilus scratched his head and thought for a moment. This guy wants to worship me? I have enough trouble dealing with human cults that worship me. Though nothing I ever say or do has ever stopped them from doing so. Maybe try something new. Basilus cleared his throat and knelt down next to the kotoing hawk. Raise your head, Vela Tavani. I, I am technically a god, this is true. However, I do not wish for worship. All I ask for is that you treat those around you how you wish to be treated. Typically with kindness. You may consider me but a man and treat me as such, he said with a half smile. Vela started to cry and mutter incoherently about benevolence or something, so Basilis pointed towards the cat. You next, please, he said. Mizan shakily stepped forward. My name is Mizan Detani. I am a Felis who defected from the Empire of Felid Kind. That is all, she said stiffly. Ren and Sven both slivered up next to Mizan. Hiya, Mr. Emperor Man. I'm Bren, and this quiet fella here is Svenny. It's hella nice to meet ya. Got to let you know, though. If you mean to a lie over there, I'll have to suck ya, she said with a wink. Sven just sighed. Why do I keep letting you talk for me? My name is most definitely not Svenny, it is just Sven. Please, don't mind her at all, he said. Basilis started laughing. I like you two. A couple of funny little danger noodles. The whole comedian and straight man thing you two have got going on is fantastic. Welcome to the Terran Imperium. Also, couldn't help but notice that Mizan said she was a defect from Kittyland. Does that mean there are many races out there soloing the galaxy? He asked. Mizan sighed. No, we are pretty unique aside for a few outliners. My people don't care for strangers. Not only that, but most of the galaxy looks like food to us, she said. Basilis nodded his head. Makes sense. You're just like our cats then. Alrighty then. Next we have... A lie? He said. A lie walked up, trying to stand tall on his eight limbs. That is I. I have to ask, what are those dreadful creatures that you fought? Aren't you scared of me for looking like them? Mad at me at the very least? He asked. Basilis laughed. No? Why would I care if you look somewhat similar to the Azarians? Those interdimensional basses have nothing to do with you, and you have nothing to do with them. Simple as that. Doubt any human these days would even look twice at you. But being the life-seated version of the octopus, you don't actually look any different. Just, uh, stay away from our restaurants on Earth, he said.